what it's all about today is a whistle-stop tour through the various types of social media that are out there. Uh, we'll look at ways of getting involved if you are a business. Step number one, first step's all about getting started, so actually getting out of the starting blocks. This involves looking at where people are actually talking about what you do on the web, even your business name in particular as well, specifically, uh, and then actually getting involved in the conversation once you've found that. Step two is about creating your properties. So by that, uh, I mean actually accounting, uh, creating accounts on the sites like Facebook, Twitter. Um, we'll look at the benefits of doing this uh, overall and also actually getting noticed once you've set these up, which is your here's key to that. Step three as well, uh, this involves really kind of showing off your expertise now and producing your own content for social media. So this could be on things like forums, blogs, notice boards, review sites. There are loads of those out there growing in popularity. Yale Reviews is one, there are absolutely loads of others. A few examples of the sort of forums that might throw up. London SE1, a community forum, so this is sad, but I'm in desperate need for a plumber. Second one, uh, Mumsnet, very, very popular with my wife. Before they actually make that call to the business, they want to get that background information to go to the business with, so they've got some kind of idea what they want, what the problem might be, how it could be resolved. Last one, emergency, does anyone know a good hairdresser around N4 London? Someone who, again, wants that um, recommendation or some advice, some information before they make a call. They're not even too worried if it's someone that they know. Uh, they're happy to take any, uh, one off the web from someone they don't know. They'd still value that. Feel free, feel absolutely free to post comments back as a business because you are the type of person who can add value to that conversation. So answer people's questions on sites. If they're looking for advice or help, then I'd say mention who you are, um, what you do, link back to your website if there's more relevant content there, by all means, and it will help someone out. So to kind of recap that first step, get onto the relevant forums and websites that are applicable to you and where people are talking about what you do and the services you provide. And when you find out where people are talking, feel free to get involved, okay, because that is expected now and people would be happy to see that and take advice from businesses online. So step two, this is all about actually creating properties for your business on the sites like Facebook, like Twitter. I think it is also worth noting um, a few points around getting people to actually look at these accounts once you set them up because you have to let people know you're on there. That's a, a key thing. Lots and lots of businesses fall down here, um, big and small. They, they build it, they think, because we're there, people will come. It's definitely, definitely not the case. Um, so I'd say you need to add references wherever you can if you do decide this is for you. Put references on things like your email signature, invoices, business cards, your brochures. It's a good idea to think about your tone of voice too. If you take a look at someone like Gourmet Burger Kitchen or um, Giraffe Restaurants on Twitter, they're kind of very, very happy to just be very, very formal, uh, informal and allow someone to be on the controls, it seems, for the day. Um, kind of very, very chatty. They're, they're happy for that to represent their brand. And I think it's kind of getting more and more like that. Consider how you're going to see this through as well. So if it does start to work for you and you think it's going well, how are you going to uh, scale this up in three months, in six months? How are you going to resource it? If you've got to put this initial kind of thought into it, then what am I going to have to do in a year's time if this works out? How's it going to work for me? If you want to stand out from the crowd, a great way to do that is to actually write content on behalf of your business. Lots and lots of small businesses are doing it, and in lots and lots of different sectors. Have a look at Yale Know How as well. Um, that is the, some blogs we have on Yale. You can find them off the Yale homepage. Here's the tools I mentioned earlier and a couple of other ones if you wanted to note them down. Google Alerts, as I was saying, was a, a great one to sign up for to kind of monitor those forums. Hootsuite and TweetDeck, very, very good if you use those or if you've heard of those. They allow you to monitor your accounts in one program or one screen. They are free, so check those out. Um, Hootsuite we use at Yale. Uh, Twirid's a good one. That uh, lets you, uh, you, you use that to analyze your Twitter account, and it will tell you what the best time of day is to tweet, uh, because that's when your followers are online. Um, so that, that's another free one to try out. Um, blogging platforms there, WordPress, we're mentioning Posturus, Blogger. There are two WordPress there because one is for writing up just on their, with them hosting it, so you'd write stuff, but it's actually on a WordPress domain. If you're interested in more marketing advice like this or uh, on social media or digital marketing in general, online marketing, have a look at a, a new site we've got, marketing.yale.com. It's just launched. There's loads and loads of free info on there and videos. 
Um, check that out. And if you are interested, have a look at Yale Business on Twitter and on Facebook, where there's kind of uh, updates about that daily. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.